What I'm going to do this evening is an experiment with a different kind of construction method I haven't tried before. I've got 45 degree aluminium strip here and what I'm going to do is cut this into four and make a frame out of it and then I'm going to try and braise the joints. Brazing is not a method I've used before. I've had one brief experiment last week which went reasonably well. So what I'm going to do is try and get a brazed uh, kind of panel for, made out of this and panel it with um, a piece of plywood just to see how strong and durable something like that is because I've got an idea for using that method for a toolbox I'm looking to build. So instead of directly cutting this into four what I've done is just cut out kind of 90 degree notches here so I can then fold it around into a square. This means I end up with a few less braised joints and hopefully a slightly stronger frame. So this is one of those in hindsight moments. Slightly obviously, bending it has not given me a particularly kind of flat, clean bend. So it's um, curved around slightly, so it's gonna be longer than I intended. And it also means the joins don't close up perfectly. But I've got a feeling that might work in my favor, possibly. The brazing rods, they're designed to kind of, I believe they're designed just to fill holes in aluminium. And so having a larger gap than just a butt joint may possibly make for a stronger joint, but we'll see. So what I have here is a scrap piece of wood. This gives me my roughly kind of 90 degree angle. And it also allows me to clamp and hold the, the bend while it gets brazed. So from what I understand, the technique to doing this is just to heat up the metal and then melt the solder onto the metal. So the solder shouldn't be exposed to the flame because it'll just melt too quickly. And that's it, all done. So the joint sets very, very quickly. So it's still very hot, but the joint is stable and can be moved. And it seems to have worked really quite well. The solder hasn't flooded all the way through to the other side. So what I'm not sure about is whether it's sensible to give it another go on the top, or whether that will destroy the bottom weld. So I've got the final join here. This one's a little bit different, so I've got the vertical to do as well, but based on the performance of the other, should be just as straightforward. I think that's it. All four joints. So I've cut down a scrap piece of nine millimeter plywood and what I'm going to do is rivet it in. This should hold well enough within the wood and would look I think pretty good against the aluminium on the side. So I've riveted in this piece of wood. This is as far as I'm taking this experiment. It was meant to see if it's an effective method for kind of constructing an enclosure or a box. And I think I've proven that it has. It, it's far from perfect, the, the implementation I've used. For example, I wouldn't have bent these joints in the future, I'd cut them to make a much squarer, uniform join. But the result's been good. Um, it went together square, it stayed square, and the wood has made it very rigid. I think what I need to experiment with now is can I retain that level of strength and join kind of coming away from the box building up with a, a joint butted onto this. Uh, I think that will be the real test to see whether or not this is effective for what I want. So I was going to leave it there but I decided to carry on and extend out and see how that wet would go uh, and it wasn't good. There were so many problems bringing up the, the kind of frame. These joints I tried butt joints but for some reason they they didn't go together particularly well uh, and then as soon as I tried three-way joints it, it just started to really fall apart and eventually when I did get a few good joints in place they just don't have any strength. I think this is a good method for its in initial purpose, the intended kind of use where it was just framing a piece of wood. So that wood provided all the core strength and the braised joints they were they kind of, they helped a little bit, but they also made the, the kind of the corners slightly more attractive because you could kind of file it down quite neatly. I think for this purpose, it just, 
doesn't work. It's not suitable for any kind of uh, structural or strong join like this. Unlike a weld, which gives you a kind of proper chemical bond between the two materials, um, brazing is just like solder, you're putting it on the top and it doesn't really kind of get in or penetrate into the material and can just break off, unfortunately. So I think this, uh, this method is kind of ruled out for my, uh, the, the application I wanted it for.